The new Anglo is going to be a business that is much simpler than the one that we have today. It's going to be 100% focused on uh, future enabling products while retaining enough scale and geographic diversification. We will be in a substantially more resilient financial position with considerable growth optionality embedded within the portfolio. We have an industry-leading copper business and that has a pathway to increase its production by 30% just through organic expansion. We will have a premium iron ore business, which through the cycle should be a fantastic cash generator with a material production uplift potential from our Serpentina deposit. And we will also have a very compelling option on food security, which we believe to be one of the best mega trends that we can see in the markets today with our Woodsmith project. Now, as a result, we believe that this business will be valued much more positively by the market, and this creates a platform for us from which to build. We are implementing a clear and a comprehensive set of plans to transform the business over the next 18 months, and I know that when we get to the other side, this journey will absolutely have been worth the effort. Now, on this slide, we can see that the, uh, what this business is going to, to look like in the future and the type of business that we're unlocking. The new Anglo has an incredibly powerful investment case, one that is far more focused with a high quality set of portfolio assets, which means growth optionality that we already own can be even more transformative and this provides a clearer read through from a value perspective. And we believe that that maximizes value for shareholders. Our operational excellence work so far is the start of a step change in efficiency and performance. And with the assets housed in a much simpler structure going forward, we can deliver material cost savings and transform our EBITDA margin. Now, on a pro forma basis for the retained business in 2023, this would have been a 15 percentage point benefit, uh, taking us all the way to 46% in that margin. Now, that's also going to drive a transformation of our relative cost position. The 31% margin performance of last year was reflective of both our fourth quartile cash cost and sustaining capex position. That is a position that we will just structurally change as we deliver on our portfolio transformation, which then shifts us into the second quartile uh, at the end of that journey and post that with a first quartile upside potential once we deliver Woodsmith in the early 30s. We are confident that we are reshaping this company to be a more financially resilient one, driving improved through the cycle performance that will maximize value recognition by the market. Now, the one point that I would like to make particularly clear is that sustainability and operating the right way is fully embedded into our strategy from day-to-day -day operational decisions all the way through to the portfolio choices that we make. We believe that it has to be a prerequisite for sustainable value creation, and it is fundamentally integral to the DNA of this company. None of that is going to change. We are committed to genuine alignment between sustainability and profitable outcomes. Our sustainability and our technical capabilities underpin performance at existing operational assets while being the critical enabler of our ability to deliver innovative solutions which realize our, book, our growth ambitions. Now, many of the world's undeveloped resources today are sterilized due to environmental and community challenges. I believe that we have demonstrated through our sustainability approach an ability to unlock value at the likes of Kiveco and Los Bronces. And looking ahead, I believe that we are doing exactly the same at Woodsmith and Sakati. We will use technology, of course, to further enhance these outcomes, but with a focus on driving economic returns for our shareholders and to generate positive benefits for all of our stakeholders. We are committed to operating this company responsibly and focus on sustainability. Running any divestment process is, uh, is generally demanding. Running four at one time is, uh, is very challenging. But the plan is to get to the streamlined organization in the time that we said that we were going to do it. We want to make absolutely sure that we deliver each of these processes on the best possible terms at the same time we want to make sure that there are no compromises in operating performance during this transformation phase. Now, there's been an enormous amount of effort in setting ourselves up for this and getting underway. 
we now have dedicated internal and advisory teams in place to run each of the transactions, and all of those teams are now up and running all around the relevant legal, technical, accounting, and commercial work streams. And as we'll come on to, some are already now underway in engaging with buyers. Alongside that, we have a team focused on the organization design work to make sure that we are ready to execute as soon as each of these processes is complete without any concerns to business continuity or on delivering our efficiency targets. We then have a very tight team at the center of all of this to make sure that we manage all the critical interdependencies across all of these processes. With a level of extra planning that's gone into this, I am confident in achieving this objective of being sustainably done with this transformation by the end of 2025.